Okay, we are back. Come on. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're back. So now um, we are at E. 6E in public hearing, where we are at Harbor Commission questions. Mr. Holsinger, any questions? Uh, no questions at this time. Okay, Commissioner Tucker? I do. Uh, Mr. President, I assume by seeing questions and comments as well. Questions and comments, Thank Bob. You, sir. Uh, <coughs> I've spoken before at the, uh, at, the, at the Oyster Point Yacht Club and expressed my concern about capital projects and wanting to, to uh, call out an awful lot of the capital projects to bring our budget back close to some form of normalcy. I know there's enough, there's a shock factor in, uh, in uh, capital projects when you, when you see all the money that's going out, nothing coming in, and all of a sudden it looks like a big uh, brackets are negative as we move forward. Uh, one thing I want to start with tonight is uh, adding to, uh, to someone's consternation to the administration's budget. I'd like to put another 25,000 in there for what I'm gonna call public relations. And uh, the expression of what we've accomplished in the year, et cetera, et cetera. And taking a, uh, a comment from my colleague when I mentioned this one before, I'd like to make sure that it's apolitical. So it's not about politics, it's not about campaigns, it's not about running for elections. It's apolitical. It just speaks to some of the uh, accomplishments that the district has done and not get them giving credit for it, in my opinion, in, in the public sector. So that's one item that I'd like to see corrected. Also, tonight we put in $61,200 more for uh, Moffat and Nickel. A and I support that. We need that. However, in, in a small token of understanding, we need to balance that with, with what I want to accomplish. So I've, if we're adding 25, and we'll get a vote at some point on that. And we spent 61, that's 86,000. So I'd like to go into the budget that we received this evening, the, uh, the supplemental. And I think, Robert, I think, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. President, you, uh, you hit the nail right in the head as did one of our speakers. This is so very, very good for us to see. Because when I look at it, and here we just added $86,200, now I'm looking to cut 90000 from this item. And unless I can be told differently, I mean, bike racks and barbecue racks, all of which are important. Uh, other signage to replace and or remove, signage at Highway 1. Uh, I don't know what replace water to floats means. That's the flexible hoses that come off the main line at Johnson Pier or Oyster Point's docks. The flexible ones you see, they eventually fatigue out. So we keep maintenance of replacement each year. Okay. And they're not uh, cheap. And then I look at ground rehabilitation. May I ask what that is? If that was the Oyster Point one, I have no. No, no, it's still on Pillar Point. It sounds like uh, plantings and things like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. See, I could. That's 20, 40, 68. That's ninety thousand right there. And I did notice, as was pointed out to us, that Oyster Point is almost uh, less than one half of what the cost is in Pillar Point. And I know Pillar Point is where the action is, and where the money is, and where our commercial fleet is for the most part. But those are, those are some things that I'd like to see change. Those 90,000, unless I can be explained to me differently, uh, taken out to balance the 90,000 we just uh, moved into the budget tonight. And that's nothing compared to when we get to, uh, when we get to capital projects because while I, spent the, I was voting to spend the 61,000 for the engineer, I'm certainly not gonna spend 650,000 this year or even next year with tearing down the R Romeo Pier. I mean, I was here when we first closed it uh, 15 years ago, and I just don't see spending the money because we don't have it right now. And that's notwithstanding uh, tearing up the capital budgets project that we have yet to get to. Thank you, Mr. President. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Paravano? I have no comments at this time. Thank you. Commissioner Brennan? Okay, thanks. Um, just following up on some of uh, Commissioner Tucker's comments, um, <clears throat> if He's proposing that we remove the 650000 which is just a wild guess at this point as to what it would cost to remove the pier. Um, then why are we going ahead spending $61,000 to move forward with the Coastal Commission? Because if we wait, we'll have to redo our whole application. We won't be able to just 
use an outdated application at a later date. So it makes no sense to spend the 61000 if we're not going to go through with the demolition of the pier. That would be a complete waste of $61,000. So I just want to note that. Do you want to respond? But I'm not done. Do you want to respond? It's, it's not sad. yet. I'd just like to finish because I have a lot to cover. Well, Thank you. You know what? Up. I didn't interrupt you. So no, but you asked if a question. You, I didn't ask you a question. I, I just made a statement. So if you'd please not interrupt me, I'd appreciate well, that. Well, then I apologize. Chair, let's have her, if you let's could. Let's have her finish and then. And thank then you. We'll, so finish. moving on. Um, the, the situation with the budget is very serious. Um, we are dipping into reserves by over $3.5 million um, if you include the depreciation, which we should include because we have to do maintenance. So, you know, based on what I'm learning about the district, we've been dipping into our reserves for the past decade, and the district is going broke because of it. Um, this problem is so serious and so severe, we, it's not as if the board can sit here and chip away at, you know, uh, little tiny improvements like bicycle racks or barbecue grills, we've got to like make some really serious cuts and chipping away at little tiny things like that is not going to work when you look at the severity of the problem. So I just want to make that really clear. I'm very concerned and I think that uh, I would hope that the whole board would take this financial situation extremely seriously. I mean, we are in really, really bad financial shape and apparently have been for some time and it's only getting worse. So um, I've asked a number of questions of the general manager. I haven't gotten responses back to those questions related to the budget, so I'm going to go over those. Um, First of all, uh, I do think we need another budget workshop, um, primarily because every time I see a budget, it's not just small changes or shifts, it's like radical changes are occurring to these budgets every time they come, uh, come in, a, in a board packet. And we're talking about millions of dollars that are shifting all over the place in the budget. and. It, I can't make head nor tail out of it. I mean, as soon as I think I'm starting to understand it, then I get a new version and it's like, you know, night and day compared to the last version. So we really need to hear from our finance director about where we're at with the budget and regroup. Even tonight we got, you know, these new attachments, which were even further changes. And I appreciate the work that staff's doing and I know that they're trying to make corrections to the budget. And I think that is really important and I value the work that they're doing. But the board has to understand what's happening. So if we're making these radical changes and it's not being explained to the board, then we don't know what we're really looking at. And I have questions, you know, that need to get answered. So I think we need another budget workshop based on the fact that the budget workshop budget is, it's like comparing apples to oranges at this point. I mean, what we're looking at now doesn't look anything like what we looked at during the budget workshop. So I think we need to reevaluate the whole thing. Um, moving on, there are things in the budget uh, that appear not to be included. Maybe I'm just missing them, and I'm wondering, once some of these things start to be included, um, what is that? And I know the budget changes over time. I realize all of that, but these are things that we've already approved as a board, and it doesn't appear that they're showing up in the budget, such as, um, you know, example here would be, uh, is the strategic plan included? Am I just missing that? Where is that? It's in this current fiscal year's budget. Okay. Now. What page can we see that on? I don't have that with me. You don't have it. Okay. And what about BHI management consulting, the board uh, facilitator? Is that included? No, that's this year's money. So that's not in the budget? Correct. You would, the budget in front of you is for next year starting in July. Okay, but we haven't spent the money yet. It won't it go into next year? If, if we have, if we spend it prior to the end of the fiscal year, then it will be a carryover to this budget. 
it'll carry over. Right. Okay. So are there things that we project that we're going to need to spend on that are not included in the budget? That's what I want to find out. Like, are there things that the board needs to be aware of that are on the horizon that haven't been factored in? So I'm trying to get clarity on that. Is that something we can hear from the finance director on? Uh, not At another meeting? Uh, if I may comment, Commissioner Mr. Brennan, President. If, if, I, if I might, um, just piggyback on your question. I do believe that the finance director did discuss some of that at the last pres at the presentation that she gave at Oyster Point. For example, one of the things that she raised on her, her sort of checklist of things to watch out for, like for example, was legal costs, for example, things that, that we couldn't anticipate or, or foresee, things like that. I believe she did create some sort of a list like that, if, if my memory serves me correct. Mr. President, my colleague's time has expired. I'm not done. And this is a budget hearing, and it's really important that I be able to ask my questions because my emails aren't being responded we to. So I'm sorry, but it's very inappropriate for Commissioner Tucker to try to cut me off. So I hope that the president will handle the situation because I need to get my questions asked. And I am a board member here, and this is the budget, and this is one of the most important things that this board is responsible for dealing with. So it is unacceptable to be cut off at this I point. I rise to a point of order, Mr. President. My colleague's time has expired. Okay. We have rules. Okay, Commissioner Brennan, that's true. We did pass, there, there is a five minute rule. And so are, can you please wrap up? I have a lot of other questions and I'm going to keep going. Um, okay. Thank you. Commissioner Brennan. I'm sorry, I'm gonna keep going. It is not acceptable to cut me off about the budget. It's too important. I need to be able to ask my questions. I realize how important it is to you, but we also have rules that we've set I did not agree to ourselves. that rule, and that is not a rule you should put on a fellow board member. I'm sorry, it's inappropriate. You let the public talk longer than I do. So I'm Brennan, sorry, I have to, to finish. I'm sorry, I have to finish. I'm sorry, but I have to finish. You're not sorry. You're not sorry, and I'm the chair, and you're basically overriding what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do tonight. I have not even scratched the surface of the questions that I need to have answered, and the general manager will not email me back with the answers to my questions, which, by the way, you've been CC'd on, so you're very well aware of the questions that I've asked that I haven't gotten responses for. So we I, have I have other, no other options. Uh, we also have other items tonight, and we're only on item six. Well, I have to ask these questions, so I'm sorry, but it's very important that I be able to ask the questions about the budget. It's not acceptable to cut me off. Your questions can't continue to the other budget meetings we're going to have. I need. We're going to have another budget meeting. I mean, like we're we have to vote to said. approve the preliminary budget tonight, and it's important that I be able to ask my questions. I've been holding the questions, and it's important that I be able to ask them. And we're wasting time arguing about it. I'd just like to be able to get through it, and I'd appreciate the courtesy of being able to ask the questions since the general manager refuses to respond to me outside of meetings. Okay, this is my only Brennan, opportunity. It is not your only opportunity. I yes, allow, it is. I will only allow a few more minutes. Thank so you. Please wrap Thank up you. I summarize in a few minutes. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Nixon. Okay. So there are things that um, apparently we're not doing that could be bringing in revenue, and I'm, I'm concerned about how those could potentially improve our budget situation, um, such as uh, permits that we're not collecting, and those sorts of things need to get looked at quickly because it's clear if you look at this budget that the district is in peril and we need to bring in new sources of revenue. So we need to be talking about what those new sources of revenue could look like and we need to be talking about major cuts that can really bring this budget into some semblance of um, alignment with reality. So I would like to task the board with doing that, and I think we need to have a finance committee to address these issues. I've asked for this before, and I'm asking for it again. I think it's urgent. It's one of our policies that we have a finance committee, and I think that this board needs to start working 
harder on resolving some of these problems and come up with proactive steps. Um, it's something that we can do as board members, and I encourage everybody to figure out a way to do that. So that's all I'm going to say on that topic. Um, God, it's like there's so much here. How can I even get, you know, I can't get through it in a couple of minutes. There's just no way. Um, questions? <sighs> Regarding <clears throat> regarding the way the budget's being presented, um, when we get the revised budgets, there's no redlining, there's no letter to the board about the changes that have been made. That needs to change. And that's that's common with all the documents that we get from the staff. It's really, really important that if the staff is going to make changes to things like the budget and documents that are critical for us to review, that we get redline versions or we get some sort of a letter explaining what the changes are. Otherwise, it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. And I, it, it, you know, I've said this before, but it, it still isn't happening. Um, we've got to get things redlined so that we know what these changes are so we can make sense out of them. Example of a, another um, opportunity for revenue is we just gave away a location for a hoist. There's a possibility we might get a grant. I don't know what's going to happen with that. Maybe there will be an opportunity for additional hoist. I don't know yet. But we can't give away revenue generating opportunities. We are in terrible financial shape and we've got to generate new revenue streams and the site, a new site for a hoist is a perfect example of a way to do that. So that's another proactive step the board could take to make sure that we're not giving, get, making gifts of public funds, we're not giving away opportunities for new revenue streams. Um, all right, I, I, I'll just... If I may. Thank you, Mr. Uh, it's, now, it's now 9 o'clock, yes. and uh, since there's no indication of how this, uh, the rest of this meeting is going to go, I request uh, in the interest of the district that you uh, move at this time to take up item 17, bills and claims, and item 15, uh, amending the, the budget now uh, for this current fiscal year, not the one we've been discussing, so that we are uh, taking care of our required uh, financial business, then you can return to Commissioner Brennan and, and other items. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're, we concluded um, Harbor Commission questions, so I'm going to close public public testimony. This will continue at the next meeting. Um, so close public testimony. And now, with regards to Commission deliberation. With regards to commission deliberation, I would like to um, just go down the line and if there are any final thoughts that each commissioner, um, have just a few minutes for each commissioner if you have any final thoughts on this, um, we will continue this here. Commissioner Holsinger. Well, um, final thoughts on this. My final thoughts are is that this budget uh, is a process that's going to take, uh, by the time we're done, probably close to three months. Um, I appreciate all the input that we get from the public. I appreciate the hard work the staff has done to uh, put the budget together as well as to do the presentation it did at the study session. Um, I think that reasonable people can can understand the issue of depreciation. Re reasonable people can understand capital projects, approving them with an estimated budget and then not doing them if we have other priorities come up either on an emergency basis or because we lack funds to do it is, is, is a necessary way of doing business and trying as best we can to plan to meet the public's needs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Tucker? Mr. President, other, other than the remarks I made earlier regarding uh, some of the online items, uh, I have nothing further to add or suggest at this time. Thank you. Commissioner Paravano. I'm ready to make a motion. Okay, let, before we get to your motion, Commissioner Brennan. Um, I just want to restate that uh, currently we are dipping into our reserves in order to um, 
operate the district, and that includes salaries and maintenance and basic operations, um, and also paying down the loan to uh, the Division of Boating and Waterways. Um, we are doing that by dipping into our reserves. We are going uh, over, well, let's just say we're in the hole $3.5 million um, for the budget that we're discussing now, and we have been dipping into reserves for the last decade. Um, this situation is really out of hand. Uh, it hasn't been discussed enough, and the board needs to be proactive and take action to deal with it, and we need a finance committee to address it ASAP, and I can't believe that I'm the only person on this board that's alarmed about it. Um, I'd like to see a little more interest by my fellow board members, so I'd encourage you to take a serious look at it. Thank you. Thank you. And I would like to just say also that I, I do want to thank staff as well, because putting together uh, a $10.1 million budget is, is, not, is no easy task, especially trying to get it approved by all the stakeholders, including the commissioners, is not easy. Um, as you could imagine all the different opinions and, um, and, and just directions that people have. Um, I also want to thank the public for their input. Um, it's, it's really important to get uh, just, I think, differing, um, differing opinions on this because it helps us, and this goes back to what Commissioner Tucker said, with regards to communications, and it's not PR, it's communications, really, um, and how we communicate the budget because, I mean, you know, there are classes that people take on how to understand this, this type of um, financial data. And it can be very, very complex. And I think that it, it speaks to the importance of how um, staff can help us and help the public better understand a lot of these complexities and, and what's really behind these numbers and what they mean. So um, I look forward to the, the continuing discussion and um, clarifications of some of these, um, these um, confusing areas that, that we have. Um, Commissioner Caravana, you wanted to make a motion. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. I have to uh, make a motion that we adopt resolution 13-14 to approve the preliminary operating and capital budget for fiscal year 2014-15 and authorize issuance of a public notice, public budget review, and comment. I hear a motion. I hear a motion, I hear a second. So um, let's have a roll call, please. Commissioner Brennan? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Commissioner Aye. 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 Aye, so this will um, move this, uh, uh, for this hearing to the next meeting. We are now at item seven, and then I have one comment card on item seven, so why don't we first have, oh, I'm sorry, that's right. Mr. Grinnell, you wanted to move 15 and 17 just because of time. It is now <coughs> 9, 10. Um, yeah, I, I, like, I think we should do that, because otherwise um, we will um, have problems with our uh, operations. Not, according to that, watch 9 or 5. So um, I'd like to go ahead and go to item 15 then, then we'll go back to seven. Um, item 15 is the amend, amending of the fiscal year 2013-14 integrated operating and capital budget. Uh, Mr. Grinnell, would you like to say a few words about what this is uh, about? Yes, uh, very quickly, uh, this is another uh, adjustment to this current year's budget. Uh, I direct your attention to page two, uh, the, the backside of the resolution, to exhibit A, which lays out uh, the amendments to the uh, 2013 and 14 budget that uh, need to be done to uh, bring the budget uh, into uh, compliance with the um, uh, previous board decisions um, on several uh, uh, things, and they're laid out there. Uh, what are we? Which item are we on? Fifteen. Fifteen. 
Mr. President, I'll move the adoption of Resolution 12-14 as uh, stated in the uh, agenda packet uh, to uh, uh, amend the uh, final integrated operating and capital budget for fiscal year 2013-14 by $1,715,900 as set forth in Exhibit A. Okay. Second. I hear a motion and a second um, on this item. Any questions on this? I have questions. I don't even... Okay. Does Brennan. this have something to do with the uh, all the revisions that we got when we first got here tonight? This, okay. Excuse me. This has to do with this current year's budget, not okay. the preliminary budget for 1450. It's totally different. Okay. Mr. President, if I I think I could explain that fairly okay. simply. Commissioner Holsinger, please. Um, Again, this it, this just uh, simplifying. Yeah, it's my understanding that this resolution simply recognizes uh, action previously taken by the commission to approve the expenditure of various funds as categorized. Uh, and then formally integrate them into the current operating budget. Uh, part of that is necessary in this particular situation for the purchase of the Alhambra property uh, because a resolution of this type is necessary in order for DBW to uh, approve um, the expenditure as, as they <coughs> currently have the uh, authorization to do. Mm -hmm. Is that Mr. Grinnell, is that accurate? Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, Commissioner Brennan, any other questions? <coughs> so it looks like we're making changes to last year's budget related to legal costs. What does no, this mean? Once what? again, we're talking about the current year's budget. Okay, so what are we doing here with this? Like, what are we moving around with these figures? Okay, so last year, I think what this is saying is there are certain costs that were in last year's budget that have to be amended because we've spent different monies in that. So the legal costs that we had in the budget for 13-14, we exceeded those legal costs this 13-14 year. So we have to amend the budget to account for the fact that we exceeded the legal costs. We have to amend the budget for the fact that we're buying the Alhambra property. And we have to amend the budget for, I think that's it. But there's a few other things on here. Legal costs and the sewer line. So we're amending the 13-14 budget. To accommodate those. Money that we, I think you guys have already decided to spend. We have to amend 13-14 budget to account for that. And that's what this resolution is doing. Thank so, you for so, explaining that. So that on paper reflects our decisions. Correct. Cool. So, um, if, if there are no other questions, let's do a roll call, please. Ms. Nixon. Aye. 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 And thank you, Commissioner Holtzinger, for explaining that, and also Ms. Harris for explaining it. Um, let's see. We are now. Let's we jump to 17, so we can get that out of the way. Bills and claims in the amount of four hundred and twenty-seven thousand nine hundred and forty-eight dollars and twenty-three cents. Mr. Treasurer. Mr. President, members of the commission, I have reviewed the bills and claims to remove approval of the uh, bills and claims in the amount of four hundred twenty-seven thousand nine hundred forty-eight dollars and twenty-three cents. Thank you. I hear a motion. Do I hear a second? I'll second it. I have a couple questions. Okay. A motion second. Um, questions, Commissioner Brennan. Um, so I noticed that we have fourteen thousand eighty-nine dollars and another seven thousand four hundred and sixty-eight in legal fees um, from Aronson Dickerson Cohen Land's own and. In addition to that, we also have Liebert, Cassidy, Whitmore. I'm just wondering why it's so much higher than it usually is. Um, it's quite, a, it's about, gosh, $20,000 higher than usual. So can I we can get an, that, okay, um, are you finished with your question? Yes, can somebody answer it? Okay, I think our treasurer is going to answer that question. Thank you, Mr. President. 
the additional funds, especially the Liebert and Cassidy, come through the uh, investigators that investigated harassment complaints. This is all from Aronson, Dickerson, Cohen, Lanzone that I'm talking about. It's not from any yeah, other sorry, law firm. Can we have him finish? Yeah. Sorry, Commissioner Tucker, please yeah. finish. Our regular counsel, which you just quoted, it's also a part of their expense in dealing with uh, Liebert and Cassidy to finish up and brief us and go back into closed session and <coughs> give us the examples of what the outcome of the investigations were and prepare the necessary papers. Jean, could you explain it since they're your fees? Well, I think his short explanation is um, exactly what it entails. I mean, the bit, we've also given the bills and take a look at those if you'd like, but I think that's, a, that's the explanation. So we're paying one law firm to do a bunch of work. They're paying um, investigators. Then that law firm is meeting with the board. We're paying them to meet with the board and we're paying your law firm to meet with the board to explain what the other law firm is doing? No, I don't think that's exactly right. That's what it sounded like. Complaints were made, the law requires those be um, investigated. Investigators were retained, so you're paying in part investigator costs. Um, but we're not paying that to you guys, right? No, that's being paid through Libra Cassidy. Right. You're also being billed for the legal services provided by Libra Cassidy to advise the board. I advise the board on separate issues in relation to the investigation. So this is just f for costs, for your advice to the board? No, I don't believe that. This is probably my, I would be happy to go back and look at my bill. I would guess this is our entire bill, uh, and there are many other matters on that. Uh, Mr. Lanzone is assisting uh, you with the purchase of property. Um, so that advice. property? I review, I review contracts. I attend your meetings. So it, it would cover all services provided during that moment. Okay, well, I'm just noticing it's like hugely higher than normal. So I'm wondering what it, the... It is higher than normal. I, I agree. So part of that is the property negotiation? I believe <laughs> Okay. Great. That, that was my question. Um, the one other question I had is about the web marketing consulting. Um, I see there's a charge for $2,610.40. Is that for changes to the website or what is that for? Great. Bless you. Excuse me. I don't know. Well, who is web market consulting? What yeah, the website, yeah. So it could be. I haven't seen it. I didn't take a glance at the bill. So. so Web Market Consulting is the company that does our website. Yeah. And is that for developing the new website? This, like I said, I haven't seen it. Wait. Excuse, Excuse me. me. Okay, so you don't Excuse know. Excuse me, I can comment on yeah, that. Yeah, I'm allergic to Hey, Mr. Grinnell. Uh, Bullshit. Web Market Consulting uh, does not bill a routine monthly retainer type thing it's periodically and so sometimes you'll get a larger amount uh, what that uh, amount takes up is all services provided uh, both uh, monitoring and updating the website in terms of things like uh, adding agendas and minutes as well as uh, the uh, uh, improvements that are being worked on with staff Okay, thank you. That's all my questions. Thank you. So there was a motion and a second. So can I have roll call, please? No. Aye. 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 Motion carries. So we are done with items 15 and 17. So we are back at item number 7, for which there is a comment. So why don't we have... Um, the report first from staff district rates and fees scheduled for fiscal year 14-15 for Oyster Point. Mr. Grinnell? Yes, uh, again, uh, running in parallel with the development of the budget for fiscal year 14-15, um, go the rates and fees. Uh, at this time, we have only one uh, change to this Oyster Point uh, draft rates and fees schedule for the next fiscal year. You'll find it on page two, bottom of the page. Little board permits uh, were recommending adding a $350 security deposit. Uh, we find that. Uh, some of the accounts um, 
that get into arrears are liveaboard, and we want to try to uh, uh, address that uh, question. And so uh, one of the things we're going to try to do with your approval would be to require a, a security deposit up front. Question. Thank you. Um, why don't we okay, why don't we do this? Why don't we have before we get to your question, why don't we do the public comment for I'm sorry, are you finished? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Grinnell. Why don't we do the public comment, then we'll have commissioners' questions. Mr. Warren, you, you uh, have a comment card for this item, number seven. Uh, well, I submitted one for seven and eight because the my comments would be identical for both items. Oh, okay. Uh, so okay. I only intend to speak once for the two items together. Um, and, and again, this is regarding the uh, copy charges. Uh, I, I don't remember if this was during the meeting or during the break that uh, Ms. Harris uh, explained to me um, uh, that uh, typically for public records act requests, especially electronic ones, that, that you don't actually do the charging. And so if, if that's the policy, I think that it somehow needs to be embodied in the fee schedule uh, because uh, you, you don't want to uh, allow any potential for um, uh, different rules to be applied to different people. Um, so, you know, if in fact you don't charge for, um, and, and I was also informed that there's very few requests for paper records, uh, so that's a good thing. Um, and, you know, so if, if uh, for, for small numbers of pages that are copied, if you don't charge for those, uh, you really ought to have that uh, stated in the policy or in the fee schedule, you know, whatever the policy is, state of the fee schedule. And then um, I was also told that you don't um, charge for electronic copies, and yet it's still in here. Um, and so if, in fact, you don't charge for uh, like emailing a, a document or something, you really need to, to strike that from the fee schedule. Thank you. OK, thank you. Thank you. Page three of six, Ms. Harris. I know I'm confused about where the electronic copies are. At it's the bottom of three of six. Photocopy, yeah. Okay, those photocopies are actually like if you were to walk into one of the offices and say, I'm going to copy them. So it's I think. It's not related to PRA. It's, it's related to the service. I see. Okay. Sometimes people come in the office and want to vote and they can have it on their Maybe you might want to just add the word services, photocopy right. services. Yeah. I don't know if that, that will differentiate it from PRA. And also the okay. contact is just for the, the CD donor for document. It's just the charge for the access to the CD. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, that's yeah. correct. It's the way it's, the way it's written is, is confusing. Okay, so thank you, Mr. Warren. Um, commissioner's questions on this item. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Grinnell, uh, you wanted to draw our attention to the change in the area of liveaboard permit, and it was highlighted in red. Yes. You drew my attention to it immediately, which is the point that's been made several times tonight. If you could do the same thing, or Ms. Grilazza could do the same thing as it pertains to the budget, when we come near the end, or at least to put in italics, we can identify it so easily that there's been a change from this number to that number. And I think we've heard that comment several times tonight. We will. And I, I see it, it really seems to work. We will do that. Thank you. I have a, just a comment. I, I just simply want to note that with the exception of the comment we've heard tonight regarding photocopy costs, there really hasn't been any public comment on the uh, rates and fees for, for either facility. I want to inquire of the uh, general manager, um, are our current birthers and our current tenants, those people currently using these types of services, how are they provided with a copy of these proposed rates and fees? Are they notified in, in anything that's mailed to them with their uh, rental invoices uh, that this is available for review? How are they notified oh, yes. that there's, there's an opportunity to look at it? Yes, at the outset of the process, they were given a schedule of all the hearing dates, all mm -hmm. the meeting dates when these are coming forward. Okay. Are they provided with a with a are they uh, is a copy of the proposed rates and fees made available to them at the Harbor Master's office? Yes. Okay. Thank you. That's all I wanted. Did we to raise anybody's rates? No, not at this time. No. That's why we're not hearing from them. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Um, thank you, Commissioner Holzinger. Commissioner Paravano. Don't how much to take. Commissioner Brennan. Thank you. Um, so I'm noticing the um, Bay Area Marina rates for 2014 sheet, and I believe that's new. Isn't that new? It's on the back page of item seven. Yes, uh, new meaning it wasn't in last year? It wasn't in the last uh, schedule. Okay. So it's been added. I'm just pointing it out to make sure everybody's seen it. On um, six of six, right? On six of six, yeah. Six of six for yeah. item seven. Yeah. So um, well, the first thing I did when I looked at this is I crossed out Alameda and I crossed out Pier 39 because those two locations really are too far away to have any bearing on the competitive nearby uh, marinas. So once I did that, I started looking at Brisbane and Coyote Point and Oyster Point Marina. I'm sorry, o Oyster Cove um, as compared to Oyster Point. And it appears that although a lot of the fees are uh, close, uh, it, it appears that Oyster Point is the highest uh, in, in many cases um, consistently. And I know we talked a little bit last time about the fact that we have a lot of um, empty slips at Oyster Point and that we need to do something to try to incentivize um, getting more tenants. So I just wanted to make sure that the board saw this and I'm wondering if the staff could present us, assuming we're not approving this tonight, present us with some sort of a recommendation on, you know, maybe we should drop our uh, monthly rates so that we're not the highest, so that we're a few dollars less than some of our competing marinas. If it would incentivize filling those slips, we would profit uh, or we would bring in money versus not bring in any money at all. So um, I think it might balance out that we would we would make more money versus the losses that we're seeing right now. So I'm just wondering if there could be follow-up to this report. And I also wanted to thank whoever compiled the information because I know they had to make calls to figure all of this out. So um, I have some other stuff, but Scott, you're looking at me like you have something to say. Well, I, actually, Mr. President, if I may speak. One, yes. one thing Please. I should say Mr. in the three that you're mentioning, Oyster <coughs> Point, Coyote, Brisbane, and Oyster, I should say four, and Oyster Cove, one of the issues that is not seen, the invisible elephant in the room, is that those other ones may say, no, it's prohibited to have liveaboard. Mm -hmm. But most of them have a good quantity of liveaboard, what I refer to as sneak aboard. Mm -hmm. And they're not enforcing, which is also why their occupancy is higher. Mm -hmm. We follow the rules, and they're not. Do we have any liveaboards at all? Yes, we do. I'm one. And that oh. is the thing. We follow the rules. So how many can we have? 10%. 10%. And the thing is, many of those marinas are just ignoring the issue. So they do have a higher occupancy and a lower rate. But the thing is, though, is that they're also, you know, like I look at Oyster Cove, and I'm not trying to put down anybody else's marina. But I walk into Oyster Cove, it's less wind than what we have at Oyster Point. But I'll tell you, the docks are rocking. They are about half the width of ours. There's a lot of other issues here than just the rate. It's the conditions of the docks. It's the condition of the location. Um, you know, you have to take it all into consideration, not just dollars. Well, whatever the case may be, um, and you know better than I do because you're over there more, um, I think we need to figure out some way to try I to get disagree but I, I just want to make sure that's clear is that there is you know each each way where we compare it's apples and oranges all the way across even though they all have a slip so are you suggesting that we should we should be the highest rate I'm not saying we should be the highest rate I'm saying that we have a standard we are trying to fulfill and the thing is we also follow the rules of BCDC and so you know, we've talked about maybe one way of raising our occupancy is to see if we can get the rules changed. We talked about that a year ago when Pete's Harbor closed, because right now it's 10% across the board for the Bay. And my, my understanding is that BCDC is not interested in doing that right now. Have we done anything to pursue 
encouraging a change. There's been some discussions to see what we can do. Okay, because it didn't sound promising when I checked into it. Does it sound like they're changing their tune? Well, you always can give a new music to play off of. <laughs> okay. Um, well, it sounds like we need to have sort of another discussion about this later because obviously, you know, there are different th different avenues and different ways to address it that need to be looked at. Um, I agree that. Um, it needs to be a multi-pronged approach. We can't just do one thing to try to fix the problem. We've got to look at it from a bunch of well, different I, angles. Well, I think that the thing that's difficult here is it doesn't show all the services provided. You know, if you look at a hotel versus Motel 6, and you say, what, is there a pool? Is there a sauna? Is there this and that, whatever, on one hotel? And then you look at another one, you say, oh, they don't have that. You have to look at what's comparison in all services as well, and that doesn't show on this. And that's a lot of phone calling, but you know I can guarantee you we're better than the others. So, if we're president, there's also two other factors. Uh, number one, historically, the, the the what is now the Division of Boating and Waterways has made it very clear uh, a number of times that one of the few things that uh, this district and other harbors um, have control over are uh, berthing and liveaboard rates and fees. And uh, they emphasized, and in fact, uh, made it very clear when we were working with them on our consolidated loan back in 2004, that we should, in fact, try to uh, lean on our rates and fees as a major way of developing uh, revenue, obviously, so that we can retire our loan. Okay, that's one point. The other point is, even though uh, you've heard, well, uh, let's just focus on the immediately adjacent or nearby marinas, the fact is that if you look at the annual survey of uh, rates around the entire Bay Area that, that Coyote Point puts together, uh, San Mateo Parks, uh, you'll find that over the last decade and more, this Harbor District has remained pretty consistently just about a little bit over the average, you know, 55, 56 percent, something like that. And remember, this applies to both Oyster Point and Pillar Point. Uh, and so we've remained remarkably stable. That doesn't lessen any of the concerns that Commissioner Brennan has raised or, or uh, Harbor Master Grindy about um, getting more revenue, uh, increasing occupancy, and so on. But it's very clear, uh, no question about it, that one of the things that attracts more uh, occupants uh, or, or, or boaters to become occupants is uh, amenities available in a marina. Mm -hmm. And we were discussing that yesterday with the city manager of, of South San Francisco, mm -hmm. who was quite aware of this kind of thing. So that's why a lot of what we're trying to do uh, uh, in terms of developing the marinas is making them more attractive to voters. It's not just a matter of lowering rates. May I make one more comment before I just on rates for a second? Is that six years ago, Port of Seattle made a mistake. They lowered their rates lower than anybody else in Puget Sound. What it did was what was referred to as the race to the bottom. Every other marina had to react because all of a sudden Seattle started drawing every boat to them. But what happened was then everybody else started dropping their rates, coming up with other ways to reduce prices, to retain or bring back. And it became a war in Puget Sound on rates. So even the intent of lowering a rate, you have to be very, very cautious on how you do it so that you do not create that war. It's a huge, huge issue when you have as many boats in the Bay Area as we do. Um, I, yeah, I, I agree that that's something you've got to be really sensitive to. What is our current occupancy at Oyster Point right now? Uh, it's on the dashboard. I think it was about 65, but I have to refer to the dashboard to make sure it's so, in my report in the back. So what like percentage are we at? Uh, well, we are roughly about 65% of 428. So we're about half full. More than half. A little more than half full. Yeah, it's a lot more than half 65. full. 
65% full. Okay, well, it, it, like I said, I think it's probably a multi-pronged approach that needs to be looked at. I don't know what it the is. solution is exactly, but I think we need to start doing something about it and discussing it at meetings so that we can brainstorm and try to come up with some solutions. Um, and I think that reaching out to people in South San Francisco, city council, whatnot, is a really good idea because um, obviously, you know, Oyster Point Marina serves as a great benefit to the community there, and so it'd be great to have their thoughts and contributions and how to make it a success as That's well. That's why we've also brought the kite festival, the Easter egg hunt, yeah, and we're working on a few other events that aren't public yet, hoping to make them happen there. Because what it does is, it, like, use the kite festival as an example. Six hundred plus people showed up. Majority of them lived in South San Francisco and did not know the marina was there. Because it used to be in the, you had to cross the railroad tracks, you had to cross into an industrial area to get there. And now it's a business park and they, a lot of people are new to the area and didn't know. Yeah, no, I think. And the, I just met with Parks Department on Saturday for the same issue. That's great. That's great. I think that's great what you're doing to get the community to be aware that it's a recreational opportunity there. Um, okay, so I'm going to keep going. I don't want to hold things up. Um, so one thing that I pointed out and haven't heard back from the general manager on, um, but I did bring this up at the last meeting on April 16th, um, fish buying fees, charter boat fees, and sales fees, which we call percent rent, are not included in the schedule. Um, and I would like to see those fees also included in the schedule so that it's clear to everybody what they are. It is public information and it's too hard to get answers to what those fees are. I myself have really struggled to try to get that information and it should be transparent and available to the public and it's something that if the board is reviewing fees, um, and rates, um, we need to look at all of the fees and rates so that we get a total picture of um, where we have money coming in uh, from these rates and fees. And right now we're missing like a huge piece of the pie in assessing this because these are some of the rates and fees that bring in the most revenue to the district. So of course they should be included in the schedule. So I'd really like to see that in the next version. Um, and I know I brought that up before so I was expecting to see that this time. And then really quickly the last thing is um, I know that the general manager he did respond to one of my questions, which is, um, what about commercial activity permits for non leasey fish buyers? The board approved that in 2012. That's a revenue stream that this district approved in 2012. We have not seen one cent of that money because there has been no um, attempt to collect those fees, and we have let uh, a lot of money go by without, without any attempt to collect it. Um, I think we need to look at that. We need to figure out how we're going to collect those fees. If we're not going to collect those fees, then we shouldn't be requiring them. And our policy that we approved is that we require them. So we need to take a look at that. And those fees should also be included on the fee schedule as well. And we should, you know, if we're going to approve uh, requiring a fee, we should be collecting it. And if we're not going to collect it, you know, it's not okay to just say that it's um, on hold or uh, we're not sure how to collect it, so we're just going to like wait. Um, you know, I've heard some of these things from from the staff, from the general manager specifically, and uh, you know, we set the fee. <coughs> The board approved the fee. If that's the case, we need to collect it. We're not. Um, so I'd like to see that in here too because we're actually collecting it. Um, but I hope those things can be added. And that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Um, so now we are, do I hear a motion on item seven? I move that we uh, carry over item seven and eight to uh, the next uh, meeting for further hearing. I'll second. Okay, I hear a motion and second. Roll call, please. Aye. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm sorry. Let's back up. Hold on, hold on. Um, that was seven and eight. We've been discussing both. Yeah. Yeah, seven and eight. So it's a motion for seven and eight. Um, 
So I would like to say that I uh, recuse myself from item number eight on I Okay, well let's just do number seven yeah. then first. Okay, for seven. Roll call for seven. Sorry. Commissioner Brenner? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. 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 And who was the, the motion? Who was the second? I was the motion. I was the second. Okay, thank you. I'll also make a motion to continue item number eight for public hearing to the next meeting. And I'll second. Can I recuse myself from this? Well, it's going to move to the next meeting. Oh. Cover so, your ears. It doesn't matter. They're ready. They're ready. Oh, yeah. still yeah. should recuse. Okay, so you will recuse then. Okay, thank you. Um, so let him recuse. <laughs> then we'll <laughs> Hold your breath. You'll be back in a minute. Yeah. Okay. He's very serious about it, yeah. and I respect it. Yeah, he's being respectful. And then, okay, well, Robert, we'll do the roll call, but we need to do item 13. We need to take that out of order because that's a very important time right. tonight. Well, 13 and 14. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, um, so item number eight. <coughs> okay, let's have a, a roll call on the motion for eight, please. Oh. Aye. 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 Motion carries, and there was one um, recusal, so let's bring him back in. Okay. He's coming back in. Mr. President, I would uh, move to take items 13 and 14 out of order and place them next uh, for consideration. I, I would agree. Okay, so uh, let's do item 13 then. Uh, as soon as, as soon as um, Mr. Paravano gets up here, we'll get to 13 and 14. Mr. We President, are, if I may, yes. in the interest of time, I would move to adopt a res uh, resolution 10-14 and amend the district business plan for division of boating and Division of Boating and Waterways, add Appendix C, the purchase of the office building at Alpernada. This is a technical thing that we must do before we can continue the purchase of the Alpernada. I would so move. Second. Okay, I hear a motion and a second. Yes, it is a technical um, issue that we have to, to deal with in order to move forward with the purchasing of the office building at El Granada. So there's a motion and a second. Any questions on this item? Okay, roll call, please. Aye. 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 Motion carries on 13. So item 14, possible cancellation of Harbor Commission meeting on July 2nd. That's the July 4th um, week. Uh, Mr. Grinnell. Uh, yes, it's been uh, generally past practice for the Harbor Commission uh, to cancel uh, the Harbor Commission meeting uh, first meeting in July if it's uh, uh, on or very close to the July 4th holiday. And so uh, this item has tended to be on the agenda early to allow you to consider that. So okay, moved. Thank you. So moved to cancel the meeting of July 2nd. Okay, I hear a motion. Do I hear a second on that? I will second it. Okay, I hear a motion and second. Uh, any questions on this? Okay, roll call please. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Um, we are back to item number nine. Uh, Harbor Commissioner of Benefits informational and possible action to amend the Commissioner of Benefit policies. Ms. Harris, you have a report on this, and I also have a public comment card. So why don't we go ahead and do the report, then I'll do the public comment card by Mr. Warren, then I'll take Commissioner questions. So, uh, Ms. Harris. Okay, so in January, we gave a report regarding uh, the Harbor Commissioner benefits that are available. And uh, it was suggested <coughs> that some of those benefits may want to be changed. So we had to get um, an opinion on some of that because we have there's all kinds of new, newly enacted um, Affordable Care Act, which may come into play because if we had part-time employees and we had over 100 employees, we may have had to provide um, health care to them. But it was found that that did not pertain. So they are, I've given you several options here um, if you wish to take into account on um, changing a board of government benefits. So option one would be no changes. Option two would be to discontinue benefits in future terms of office. And number three would be to discontinue benefits for newly elected commissioners. Okay. And then I haven't done any 
when you talk out sort of policies, and I figured that that would be too crazy to try to give you okay. 10 different options. And so if there's a decision made, then I'll bring those back. Okay, point of clarification on your report. This is this is really good. Um, I like I like the way this is laid out. It's very easy for me to understand. Um, I understand obviously option one, no change. Can you tell us a little bit the distinction between two and three? I'm a little confused between your discontinuous. Can you explain what two and three and the difference between them? Okay, so option two is the board could choose to alter or eliminate one or more of the benefits offered to commission but any change would not be effective until after the next board election. Okay, so the next board election is in November. So the changes will be coming to effect and, you know, effective in the new, after that November election. Okay, okay. so in other words, if you chose to eliminate or alter the benefits, it would continue for the commissions that are currently holding office, but would terminate at, at the end of their current term. So whoever's term ends in 2014, it would end, and I believe that whoever's term ended in 2016, it would end. Bottom line, this would be, it would be a phase out of, the, of it once all five of you I would see, have completed this okay. particular term yeah. that okay. you are seated in now. And I have a question when it's my turn. Okay, thank you. Let's and have this And then three is to just, okay, the board could also choose to alter the discontinued benefits for newly elected commissioners but maintain the current benefits for re-elected commissions for as long as they remain in office with no break in service. So that would mean that whoever's in office now, if you were to get re-elected, then your benefits would continue, but for any newly elected commissioners, it would be whatever the change is. I see. Okay. So that's the difference. Thank you. It, it, it makes know. sense now. No, no, now it makes sense. It reminds me of the tier system in, in like CalPERS. It reminds yeah. me of the tier system. Okay, got it. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you for the report. Uh, do I have any? Oh, oh, before commissioners, we have a public comment. Mr. Uh, Warren on this item. Mm -hmm. All right. Good evening, Mr. President, commissioners. Um, you can probably guess what I'm going to say. Uh, the staff report seems clear and complete, and so assuming that uh, the statement of the law is accurate, which I think is ridiculous, but let's just uh, take it for what it is, then I think the only appropriate thing for you to do is option two. Nothing else is reasonable. And so I urge you to um, adopt option two. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now commissioner questions. Um, commissioner Holsinger. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> I appreciate the uh, research that's been done legally, and I appreciate staff taking the time to work with uh, legal counsel to have clarity on what the options are. What this doesn't tell me is what do other comparable agencies with elected officials do? For instance, um, agencies in which harbor commissioners are elected, uh, and that wouldn't necessarily be just limited to California, but could go up and down the western coast for comparability. Also, uh, comparable agencies uh, in size or, or, or their geopolitical sphere of influence, such as the county uh, 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 community college district board or other similar agencies, uh, perhaps even looking at uh, public agencies that are regional or even uh, less than countywide but have comparable budgets. Uh, our budget is nine or ten million dollars a year. So I'd like to get that information to find out what they do to see what seems uh, uh, reasonable and appropriate for our, our agency to do. Uh, so it would be my request that this uh, uh, matter be continued rather than for further information rather than uh, any, any vote, any motion or vote to take action tonight. Thank you. Um, you had your hand up. Whatever. Go ahead. I'm not in a hurry. Um, so in the last, uh, well, let's just say the last time this item was on the agenda and we didn't get to it, it was pulled because the general manager needed to make some changes, which I see has happened. Um, there was mention of um, allowing benefits and life insurance programs on a voluntary self-pay basis. 
And I see that's been, at least, I don't see it included in two and three. Um, it, it seems to me that whatever we do, if we make a change, we should always allow a commissioner to opt into the benefits and the life insurance on a self-pay basis. So I just wanted to make that clear. And if you look at the language in um, the bill uh, that was proposed by uh, Assembly Member Kevin Mullen, he included that in the language of his bill as well, that, that there would be um, always an option to opt in if one wanted to pay for it. Um, so I would want to make sure that that was included. Um, and I definitely support option two. There's no question about that for me. Um, as far as seeing compar comparisons, uh, I've already done my own homework and I've looked at the comparisons and uh, so I, I've already drawn my own conclusions there. If the rest of the board needs to see that, well maybe that would be helpful. But I think if we're going to look at comparisons, um, to look at agencies out of state would be somewhat ridiculous. So I would not want to see that data presented. I would want to see other agencies that are also part-time boards, not full-time boards, because we are part-time, um, that are within the state. I think that's very important. I don't want to see what they do in Mississippi or uh, New York State or, you know, another country. I want to see what is done in California. So I just want to be really clear on that. This is the state that we, we live in and uh, this agency is um, part of the state of California, so I think it's relevant that we look at, we, we look within our own state. Um, I'd like to make a motion to um, adopt option two, um, but add to that that uh, we allow benefits, health benefits and life insurance um, on a voluntary self-pay basis to any commissioner that wants to pay for it. Um, I was going through commissioner questions, so... Well, I, I, I just made a motion. motion. Okay, I have your motion, but let me go ahead and finish up here. Commissioner Paravano, did you want to say anything? Commissioner Tucker. Okay, and I, I just wanted to say that... Um, that uh, to the point of, in terms of research, the most obvious one to me in terms of harbor commissions would be the Oxnard Harbor Commission, because they're very similar to us in a lot of ways, and they would be a good one to look at. They're in California, and they're elected just like us, so um, that'd be the most obvious one. Uh, I'm leaning towards option two as well, um, just because I, I, I really, uh, I do support um, the, the intent of um, uh, the Mullen um, proposal, and so I think option two is very similar to that, to the spirit of that um, piece of legislation. So um, there's a motion. Do I hear a second? Okay, um, I'm going to second it. So let's have a uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Brennan? Aye. Commissioner Bolsinger? No. Commissioner Carolina? No. Commissioner Tucker? No. President Bernardo? Aye. So uh, the motion does not carry. Mr. President, yes. uh, as a matter of uh, order for the for the remainder of the the agenda, because of our time, I see item number twelve is an action matter that may need uh, uh, immediate consideration and possible action. I'd ask that item number eleven be skipped over for now, and we go directly to item number twelve. I agree because we have like about five minutes left. Let's do um, item twelve regarding the proposal for harbor and marina pump out services. Mr. President, I realize the time is late. May I just make one statement? Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to revisit item number nine. If, excuse me. Uh, yeah, item number nine. If in fact uh, Commissioner Holsinger's suggestion could be accommodated by staff, because I think I'd like to look a little bit at uh, option three. So if, if that could be contained, this I, that I, item nine can be moved to the next meeting. I'd appreciate that. Okay, let's put it on an agenda. Okay, back to um, sorry, back to number twelve regarding pump out, Mr. Grindy in five minutes. <laughs> or less. Or less. Okay, preferably. this is a recommendation, as you recall, I brought to the board a few weeks or months back here, uh, the approval to go out for a RFP for 
uh, pump out services. What this would do is A, it's part of our clean marina uh, activities, but it also provides a single pump out per month. Uh, the company that uh, is being recommended through the RFP program was Bay Green, who presently is on site, does a wonderful job. And um, I think that this will help our cause for future occupancy as well, because it becomes another amenity for pump outs uh, as one of the services. And I think it can be marketed that way as well. Thank you. Um, commissioners, what would you like to do? Uh, Mr. President, if I may, a point of uh, information. You have nine minutes left before 10 o'clock, and okay. I think you should relieve okay. time to uh, take up item 16 in the interest of helping your finance department. Okay. Okay, so, so let's. Time for that, please. Thank you. We'll see how this goes. Um, commissioners, on item, back to item 12 on pump out services, what would you like to do? I'd move up. Go ahead. I would uh, like to make a motion we authorize the general manager to issue a five-year contract agreement uh, for pump-out services with Bay Green Marine Sanitation starting July 1st, 2014 in an amount not to exceed $24,000 per year. I'll second. I hear a motion and a second. Um, any questions for... Okay, roll call, please. Aye. 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 All right, motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Grindy. Thank you. Really quickly, item 16, quarterly investment balances report. I have uh, one uh, public comment card from Mr. Ollum. So uh, why, why don't we go ahead and do that? And <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Uh, just wondering if maybe we can get an explanation on what funds are available in that investment report that you could use to uh, offset budget deficits for the next couple years. Thanks. Thank you. That's a good question. Okay, so. Um, Mr. Grinnell, would you like to uh, introduce item number 16? Uh, yes, uh, it's uh, another uh, in a ongoing series of quarterly reports. Um, it is pretty uh, uh, transparent and uh, it's before you. In the interest of time, unless there's a particularly urgent question, I would just uh, uh, recommend uh, uh, approval. Some more. I, I have a question. Okay. Um, I have a motion. So before we get to your question, is there a second on the motion? Second. I'll second it. Okay, a second by uh, Commissioner Paravano. Commissioner Brennan, your question? What funds are available to offset the deficit? That's a question for the general manager. Um, if you send me an email that specifies exactly what you're referring to, I will respond. I just asked a question. Can I know, you and I do not have an answer at this time because it's not specific enough. And so I request uh, you to be so. What monies here are we going to use to offset the deficit? Which deficit? What deficit? How the, much? The, the money that we're... The 30 percent that we are um, in the red to pay for our basic operations. Uh, in the interest of transparency, I request again that you send me an email specifying exactly what you're uh, requesting. Okay, and I but will respond. the problem with that is that you don't always respond to I my just email. I said that I'm committing to responding to you. Oh well, that's nice. Thank you. Good. Um, any other questions? Commissioner? Okay, um, let, let's do a roll call, please. Ms. Uh, Nixon? Opposed. Aye. 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 Motion carries um, on item 16. Well, we are at, according to that, uh, 959, is that what that says? Um, Okay, so we have five minutes. So we are, let's see, what item did we not get? Oh, 11 or 12? 11. 11. Do we have time for item 11, Mr. Brady? Or do you think that will take That's more time? 
Uh, really, this is just an informational report. It gives a timeline on the back page uh, for this project to occur okay. uh, with kind of a definition of what goes on to get okay. those steps done. So it's in And uh, we're moving forward as we speak, but I just want to make sure that you're aware of where we are and where we're attempting to move forward with. So have you notified the tenants yet? No, I have not, because basically I wanted to bring it forward to this board before I did that. Okay, so I just want to reiterate what I said before, which is I want to make sure that this is an open and transparent and public process, and I don't want to have, I don't want to find out that the staff is having um, private meetings with the leasees about this topic because this needs to be discussed out in the open and it would be totally appropriate to have a workshop specifically about this issue and invite the leasees to the workshop but the public should also be able to attend the workshop if, so, you, if you read great. through this you will see that it is shown there great in June 2014 okay. awesome yes and it does show that the only comment I will say that needs to be discussed with the tenants, the lease buyers, is if certain leases may speak to a cost of that sidewalk per square foot for them and they need to know that amount. What, what does that mean? In other words, if you extend the property outside the building, there's more tenant space that they may be leasing. So they need to be aware that they're, you know, like if it's, I haven't gone through the research on that yet because I just haven't had time yet. But if you add more square footage in front of them, that's part of their outside of the building lease. So is, uh, are the current businesses that have rest, have tables outside of their businesses paying additional for those tables? There's square footage that they do pay for as part of their lease. So that, there, that was added to their lease because they didn't used to have tables outside. No, I'm talking about the square footage in their lease on both the back and the front. There's identified space that they pay. To have the tables outside. I'm not talking about the tables. I'm talking about the sidewalk or the behind the building. If you go behind a couple of the buildings, there's spaces that were for propane tank storage. Other things are that are, that were identified as square footage for their lease. Well, we need to talk about this again because I have a lot of questions about it. I'm very well, confused. Well, that's why I put this down, though. So can we have this come back on a future meeting? Because I, I, need, I need to ask questions about it. Okay, thank you. This is informational, right? Yeah, so this is informational. It's not yeah. like, okay. Was there anything specific, Mr. Grindy, that you needed direction on tonight? Specifically? No, I just had if there was any questions. And that's why I put the outline on the back so that you would understand the steps we are going through yeah. to get there. And I thought we agreed that we weren't going to charge additional monies to the leasees because we were going to get additional revenue through their sales. We're I still. I don't believe that. I've heard that. That, that has not been determined at this time. That is what the board gave direction on. I'd have to double check the minutes, but I do not recall that being, because each lease is different. I, I believe it was uh, Commissioner Holsinger who made the motion. So that's why we need to bring this back well, to the future. Why there's come back. Back. Let's, let's have this come back, because that's a problem. Well, I, I understand that at the same time, I, I'm trying to go through the steps properly so that we do identify if there is a cost. Well, I haven't had time to do that yet because there's been other problems. We already the said there wouldn't be. So if there's a problem in you understanding that, then let's bring it to another meeting. Okay. We will continue this item. <laughs> we'll continue this discussion. Okay. Um, Mr. President, in light of the time I move, we dispense with staff reports and make a motion to adjourn. Yes. Yeah, okay, I hear a motion to adjourn. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Okay, I hear a motion second. Um, roll call, please. Aye. 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 No. Hi. Motion carried. Did you say no? I did. And look at the minutes too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you said no.